coming up next on Hoops Arkansas Football. Hard hitting high school highlights from Perryville to Pine Bluff, including showdowns between Greenwood and Bologna and Warren against Dollarway. Plus, we'll take you to Marlton to meet the Marine Scholar Athlete of the Week and update the top 25 rankings. It's all next, and it's all on Hooten's Arkansas Football. Now, Arkansas's most watched sports show, Hooten's Arkansas Football. Hello and welcome to Hooten's Arkansas Football, the fourth week of the high school football season, hard to believe. Every team in the state already into conference play and coming up in the next half hour, we have highlights from some big games, including Class 2A highlights where we'll begin tonight up at Danville. The Little Johns play and host to the Jesseville Lions and our Class 2A highlights are brought to you by State Farm. Don't have any regrets. No what if I'd have done this, what if I'd have done that. Leave it on the field. We're not going to play a perfect football game. They're not going to play a perfect football game. That's Danville's coach and prophet, DJ Crane, whose Little John's played host to Jessville in a 5AA matchup marred by mistakes. There were a couple of interceptions and sacks. There were fumbles, four of them to be exact, and that was all just in the first quarter. Now let's get to uh, the highlights. On Jessica's second possession, senior quarterback Sean Bates rolls out and finds John David Crossland for a big game into Danville territory. But the drive would end on fourth down just inside the Danville 20. The Lions botch the double handoff, and here come the Little Johns. Junior quarterback Josh Danner calls his own number, rambles 17 yards, but the drive would stall. And Danner later on left the game with a knee injury. Danville's defense continued to perform well, though. Senior Ryan James and sophomore Anthony Truong combine on the sack. Then TJ May applies pressure, and sophomore safety Chase Peak gets the interception, but Jesseville would rally to win it. Final score, Jesseville Lions 9, Danville Little Johns 7. It was homecoming night at Ola, and the Hootons were proud to be there to honor Queen Kayla Hussey and her Mustangs. The magazine Rattlers were the guests, and they took it to Ola all night with running back brothers Donald and Jason Bonner. Donald rips off a big run in the middle of an 80-yard drive, and moments later, he crashes in for the touchdown. Magazine was up 25 to 16 on Ola at the half, but Ola would storm back behind Sonic Super Team quarterback Bubba Noakes. He piled up 403 yards of offense, scored five touchdowns Friday night. Bubba will find leading receiver Josh Johnson for a nice game. Bubba completed 11 of 28 passes as well Friday night. He sprints 15 yards. He averaged 14 yards per carry on the night. Blake Manns covers the final two yards for the score. Magazine, though, was still up by 10, 32-22, but Ola would score 26 second-half points to win a thriller. Final score, Ola 42, Magazine 38. And we wrap up our Class 2A coverage at Perryville with team ambassadors Mo and Firth who watched their Mustangs ride Episcopal Friday night. Perryville led 48 to 19 late when Josh Gallagher finds Dustin Hubbard for a nice toss and catch. Then Josh Pitts rambles 29 yards for the final score of the night. Perryville will play host to number 17 Carlisle next week in a big one. Meanwhile, winless Episcopal will take on Hector. Final score from Perryville, the Mustangs 55, Episcopal 19. We got a challenge coming with Hector, so uh, let's get ready. Stick together and let's keep playing, keep running, okay? They just never scored. Our defense started stepping up and Lance Munn started throwing good balls to us when our running game got back on track. Our defense in the first half just come out flat. I mean, it's been said, that, I mean, we just come out slow on defense and we got to work on that. That's one thing we got to work on, especially against Carlisle. Ryzen stays on top of Hooton's Arkansas football class 2A rankings. Barton coach Frank McClellan had two weeks to scheme for Desark and his Bears rolled by 31. Charleston kicker Eddie Carmona kicked a 42-yarder late Friday night as the Tigers outlasted Lavaca. East Poinsett County and Palestine Wheatley hold it 4-5. Harding Academy bounced back from a heartbreaking loss to Palestine, handling Hughes by 14 Friday night. Mountainburg, Dirks, and Greenland scored easy victories. Jessville slipped by Danville 9-7. Hazen is undefeated. There's Labaca, the Golden Arrows trailed Charleston by three touchdowns early. 
but Storm Magnet could have won that one. All Timer finally opened its season with a nice road win at previously undefeated Eudora. Then it's Junction City and Bearden. Hughes stays at 16, followed by Carlisle, Cross County, Mount Ida, and Arkansas Baptist. Perryville moves up to number 21. Foreman jumps way up after a convincing 26-16 win over Gurdon. Eudora, Gurdon, and football. Brought to you by Big Red Fina. We begin our Class 3A highlights in Saline County, where the Boxite Miners made their 6 AAA debut on Friday against top-ranked Central Arkansas Christian. CAC's first possession, Jesse Gates scooting in, 7 to nothing CAC. Next possession, Gates a five yard strike to Michael Shattuck and the Mustangs were up 14 to zip. Gates finished with almost 400 total yards and four touchdowns. Boxite sophomore Neely Sullivan trying to spark the Miners, but that's Aaron Throneberry sliding in front for the interception and that sets up Nathan Moore's 15 yard run and CAC's Mustangs were up 20 to nothing. They cruise in this one, final score, Mustangs 45, Miners seven. Pulaski Academy looking to avoid a letdown after beating Warren last week, but Mayflower wasn't intimidated. Tad Turner dumps the pass to Geo Joshua, and look at Geo go. 60 yards to the house, Mayflower was up on PA 9 to 8. And the Eagles defense kept the Bruins off balance. Blaine Barlett getting the interception. Later, Daniel Hudson rocks Bruin quarterback Stephen Looks. Look at Mayflower's defense, but it wasn't enough as the Bruins score late to pull out a win and avoid the upset. Final score, Pulaski Academy 16, Mayflower 9. The Warren Lumberjacks have beaten Dollar Way by a total of 12 points over the past two years, and Warren was up at Dollar Way 20 to 16 in the third quarter Friday night when Reggie Lee blasts up the middle, drags tacklers to the end zone, and Dollar Way's up 24 to 20. Warren would come back, Deontay Jackson. I love this guy. Watch him go. He's just a junior, moved in from Vegas. He turns the corner 45 yards. Warren was up 27 to 24, but Dollar Way, which would rush for more than 300 yards and really exploited Warren's defense late, pulls off the upset. Final score, Dollar Way 46, Warren 39. Here's Hooten's Arkansas Football Class 3A rankings brought to you by the Arkansas Army National Guard. Central Arkansas Christian remains on top, followed by Boonville and Pulaski Academy. Rivercrest is undefeated. Ashdown is also undefeated. Atkins is number six and Nashville seven. Dollarway vaults into the top ten after back-to-back -back wins over the Wynn Yellow Jackets and Warren Lumberjacks. Star City is number nine, and there's Warren at number ten. Ozark is unbeaten, headed into next week's showdown at Boonville. Harrisburg is 4-0. Shallow Christian's 13, followed by Preston and Prairie Grove. Lone Oak is 16. Hoxie is number 17. Dardanelle moves to the top 20 after beating Dover by 19. There's Osceola and Newport. Fordyce is 21, followed by Green Forest. McGee is number 23, followed by Mountain View and Fountain Lake. Off to a 3-0-1 start, and the Cobras have 19 seniors that just might lead them to the playoffs for the first time since 1987. Now, the ConocoPhillips Spirit Student of the Week. Greenwood senior Randy Green knows a lot about cheerleading. She's been doing it since she was a fifth grader. But how does she do all that cheering while maintaining a 3.8 GPA, participating in Beta, Partners Club, and the National Honor Society? Be devoted to everything that you do and um, stay dedicated, I guess. Just maintaining your grades and always remembering that that's first. And then comes cheerleading. And it's awesome. I love cheering for the Bulldogs. Nominations for the ConocoPhillips Spirit Student of the Week are welcomed and can be made by logging on to Hootens.com or by stopping in ConocoPhillips Stations of Arkansas. Coming up next, more of Hootens Arkansas Football. Class 4A highlights are next. More of Hootens Arkansas Football, brought to you by Sonic. And I promise you, I have the most respect for Coach Vines in the world. He's over there telling them right now that they've got a better football team and they should win this game. And he may be right. Four out of five ball games. They may be a better team, four out of five ball games. Not tonight. This team right in here is the better team tonight. I want to go out there and prove it. He made a comment last year. It was the most disappointing loss, the, the most embarrassing loss in his 30-year coaching career. 
I'd like nothing better to send him home embarrassed again tonight. Let's go. Coach Scott Schwartz hoping his Panthers could make it two in a row over Alma, and the Panthers got off to a great start. First play of the game, Greenbrier quarterback Nick Maxfield throws a lateral to Trevor Segrist, who goes deep to Josh Camden. Wide open behind Alma secondary, Camden takes it 80 yards to start the game. The Panthers were pumped, Josh was flying high, and Greenbrier led 7 to nothing. Of course, that made Alma's legendary coach Frank Vines and the Airedales mad. Remember, Alma was down 14 to nothing two weeks ago at Fayetteville and came back. Alma would do the same at Greenbrier. Kyle Goodwin takes the option pitch seven yards. That tied it up at seven. Goodwin had a good night, stopping and cutting through Greenbrier's defense for 109 yards on only eight carries. This run would set up Alma's second touchdown. The first man through is Wesley Wagner. He walks in for an eight-yard score. That put Alma up 14 to seven. On defense, Alma's Ryan Evans. Look at him, number eight. He's getting lots of letters from the U of A, he kept Maxfield and Greenbrier running for their life most of the night. And Goodwin continued to show why he could be a finalist for the State Farm Offensive Player of the Year in Class 4A. Watch him falling his blockers, weaving through traffic before Greenbrier's Ryan Hartness will get him down. That sets up Alma's third score of the first quarter. Quarterback Joseph Medeiros, watch him on the keeper. He ran for 178 yards Friday night. This touchdown made it 21 to seven as the Airedales looked like not only the best team in Class 4A Friday night, but perhaps the third best overall team in the state. Final score, Alma 49, Greenbrier 14. The Pulaski Oak Grove Hornets making their Class 4A debut on Friday night at North Pulaski, and the Falcons pumped up. But that's not enough to stop Darren McFadden. On the first possession, a routine 20-yard gallop for McFadden. Oak Grove's up 6 to nothing. The Hornets would then recover an onside kick, and Travis Rogers would get him from 13 yards out. Oak Grove was up 13 to zip. But North Pulaski would get a spark on special teams. Roderick Randy all the way down to the three yard line. That was a bright spot for North Pulaski. That would set up a touchdown, cut it to 13 to seven. But McFadden would respond with another touchdown. He's averaging more than 200 yards per game rushing and hasn't been stopped this year. Final score, Oak Grove 52, North Pulaski 35. At Valonia, it was almost as hard to keep up with the football as it was for the Eagles to hold on to it Friday night. Bologna committed seven turnovers in the first half. And Greenwood would capitalize with one of the state's best running quarterbacks, junior Daniel Stegall. He gets in the end zone that put Greenwood up by a shocking score of 44 to 14 late in the second quarter. But Bologna would rally just before halftime. Josh McIntyre takes Nick Calger's screen pass inside the 10 yard line. And as time expires, Calger lunges for the end zone. They say he got in with .9 seconds left. It was 44 to 20 at the break. Bologna started the second half with a 65 yard scoring drive. On the 13th play of that drive, McIntyre weaving through the middle of Greenwood's defense for the touchdown. Then a Greenwood turnover. On this controversial call, Bologna would get the ball back. And Calger on the first play after the turnover, goes around the right end, follows his blockers, and he's gonna come out of there, race the rest of the way, 51 yards, look at him go. Greenwood couldn't catch him, and it was a 10 point game. 44 to 34, midway through the third quarter. Greenwood would answer with a nice drive, but face fourth down and one at the eight. The Bulldogs go for it, and go to Stegall, who dances to the outside, racing to the corner, he gets in. Daniel Stegall, he scored five touchdowns, and Greenwood holds on for the upset at Bologna. Final score, the dog pound, 57, Bologna, 42. Oh yeah, yeah, we hadn't had a turnover all year. We had seven in first half, but uh, just a bad night. Bad night, we'll get better, we'll get better. Here is Hootons Arkansas Football Class 4A rankings updated and brought to you by the Army National Guard. Alma moves into the top spot. The Airedales have won four impressive ball games. Robinson's number two. The Senators shouldn't lose a conference game this year. Likely will be 10-0 headed into the playoffs. Batesville's number three. Greenwood moves up to four and Polonia's five. Then it's the Yellow Jackets, the Rice Birds, Siloam Springs with a 4-0 start moves into the top 10. West Helena's nine and Oak Grove is three and one. The Hornets host Stuttgart next in a key 4A Southeast showdown. Harrison starts the second 10, followed by Morrillton down to number 12, and Blythewood at 13. The Chickasaws lost their first game of the season Friday night by three touchdowns to win. 
Monticello is seven points away from being undefeated and Crossland is number 15. Whitehall has lost three straight games to West Helena now. Marion's number 17, followed by BB and Fair. The War Eagles had lost four straight games to Lakeside before Friday night's 26-20 win. Paragool's number 21, then it's Balvern and Mills. The Comets have won just one game, but could still make the playoffs in the Southeast. Hope is number 24, and Greenbrier rounds out the top 25. Now, the United States Marines Scholar Athlete of the Week. When it comes to game-breaking receivers in the natural state, Moralton's Jamel Brown is as good as they come. Uh, Jamel has great speed. He's all-state football. He plays for the basketball team. He come in third in the 400 in the state track meet. So he's just an all-around good athlete. Uh, he gives us big play capabilities. It's fun. I mean, it's a receiver's dream. It's what you want to do, what you look forward to. Counted on to make big plays, the speedster also scores touchdowns in the classroom with a 3.8 GPA. Congratulations to Jamel Brown, the Marine Scholar Athlete of the Week. And congratulations to Jamel Brown from Walton, our Marine Scholar Athlete of the Week. The Devil Dogs with a tough loss at Siloam Springs on Friday night. They'll try to get back on the winning track next week. Coming up next, more of Hooton's Arkansas football. Class 5A highlights are straight ahead. Security Bank Corp. We start our Class 5A highlights at Quigley Stadium as top-ranked Little Rock Central playing host to Conway. Central's defense hadn't allowed a single point in its first three games. And Conway quarterback Brandon Solberg gets a hard welcome by the stingy Tiger D. Central trying to get something going. Stewart Franks with a nifty run and catch, but he's got to hold on to the ball. Stewart, what are you doing? Conway recovers the fumble, and this one was scoreless after the first quarter. But in the second stanza, Central's Mickey Dean takes it around the end for a touchdown and put the Tigers up 7-0. A little bit later, the Tigers still running it. Stephen McKee getting in for the touchdown and puts Central up 14 to zip, and that's more than enough with the Tiger defense. They've yet to be scored on this year. Final score, Little Rock Central 21, Conway Zilcho. The Texarkana Razorbacks visiting Windless Pine Bluff Friday night and get a look at this guy. He'll be playing some big time college ball next year. Brandon Barnett, when he's healthy, he's as good as anybody in the state. That put Texarkana up with the early touchdown. The Zebras would try to get it done through the air. 275 pound tight end David Johnson with a first down grab, but Pine Bluff couldn't stop Texarkana's running game. Final score, Razorbacks 21, Windless Pine Bluff 14. At Fayetteville Friday night, Razorback coach Roy Whitkey on hand to see his son and the Purple Dogs play host to Russellville. This is a key play in the game. Russellville lined up to punt. The snap goes over Lawson Hip's head, and he'll chase it to the end zone. Can't get it away, though. Fayetteville's Mark Bonner blocks it out of the end zone, and that would prove to be the difference in this one in the West. Final score, Fayetteville 15, Russellville 14. The undefeated Brian Hornets playing at War Memorial Stadium against winless Little Rock Catholic on Friday. You might think by the records this wouldn't be a game, but we expected it would, and it was a dandy. Bryant was up 7-6 in the third quarter when Catholic's Walter Lusk hits his third field goal of the game. Catholic up 9-7. The Hornets tried to respond, and the field goal goes through the uprights, but it's wiped out by a penalty. Bryant must try again, and this one sells wide right, and Catholic gets its first win of the year. Final score, Catholic 9, Bryant 7. Play fast. Play downhill if you're on defense, play downhill if you're off. Play fast. Remember what I told you if you're going to make a mistake? Make, make it full speed. If you're going to hit the wrong guy, hit the wrong guy hard. Now, you know what they're going to have? You know what you guys got. Is there any questions? No, sir. Let's go have some fun tonight. North Little Rock coach Brian Hudson hoping to get the charging Wildcats back in the playoff hunt. It's been three years, and North Little Rock was trying to start conference play with a win Friday against Little Rock McClellan. Speedy McClellan would strike first, though. Reggie Arnold up the sidelines, 62 yards. It's six to zip. North Little Rock responds, though. Van Steuben with some nice moves, 35 yards for the touchdown, and the charging Wildcats take the lead, 7-6. North Little Rock would pat its lead later. Josh Dixon floats up the pass, and Fred Hickory Dickory Dockery keeps his eyes on it. Double coverage, nobody's going to touch him. North Little Rock was up 14-7. They look like a legitimate playoff team. Final score, North Little Rock, 40. McClellan, 20. Who's up? Who's up?
Little Rock Hall ended a 19 game losing streak last week. The Warriors fired up for another win Friday against the Little Rock Park View. And things looking good for the Warriors early. Quarterback James Richardson, he's not going down. He's going to the end zone and Hall was up six to nothing. The Patriots would come back though. Chris Kimbrough with the jump pass to Eric Stone and Park View was up seven to six at the half. Early in the third quarter, it's Kimbrough with another pass, another touchdown. This one to Chad Mackey, and the Patriots hold on to win their third game of the year. Final score, Park View 28, Hall 20. The top two teams in Class 5A stay the same in Hooton's Arkansas football rankings. Central and Springdale, in fact, the top five is the same. Jonesboro, Texarkana, and Rogers, all winners Friday. Fort Smith Northside is undefeated, moves up to number six. Then it's Fayetteville, one spot ahead of Russellville. Cabot drops a spot, although it won in overtime at Searcy. West Memphis let one get away from it at Sylvan Hills Friday. Then it's North Little Rock. Bryant drops to 13, followed by El Dorado and winless Southside. Catholic moves into the top 25 at number 16. Then it's Lake Hamilton, high scoring Benton, Van Buren, and Pine Bluff. McClellan's number 21, followed by Bentonville, the Bombers, Conway, and Searcy. Now, more of Hooton's Arkansas football, brought to you by State Farm. And our State Farm Play of the Week comes from the first play of the game at Greenbrier Friday night. The Panthers used a double pass to senior leader Josh Camden for an 80-yard touchdown to take a 7-0 lead on the mighty tough Alma Airedales. It started with quarterback Nick Maxfield tossing the lateral to Trevor Segrist, who finds Josh Camden behind Alma secondary and earning our State Farm Play of the Week. Thanks again for watching Hooton's Arkansas Football. We look forward to seeing you again next week when we'll have highlights of the fifth week of the high school season. We'll be halfway through the regular season, and we'll have highlights from all across our state, about 20 games. Highlights of those coming up next week, and we look forward to seeing you right here on Hooton's Arkansas Football. You've been watching Arkansas's most watched sports show, Hooton's Arkansas Football.